you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to contribute to this bill, finance bill of 2023. Mr. Speaker, first, I want to appreciate the Kenyan people. For the first time in the history, they have really participated in, uh, in the co and contributed towards this contribution. This is where we have seen and uh, Kenyans have exhibited public participation. I want to encourage all Kenyans to be doing this in every bill so that they can participate in how they are being governed. Mr. Speaker, having said that, first, I want to say that I want to correct an impression which was given by my friend, Honorable Mohamed Hali. The mortgage we are being given as MP, we pay for it plus interest. It's not a, a free money for us. It is being deducted from our salaries. Therefore, somebody should not say that we are kutukona uh, binafsi. It is a right we have been given as member of parliament, and we pay for it from our salaries. Mr. Speaker, I want also correct people who have said that we, we cannot continue borrowing. America is a very stable economy. Japan is a stable economy. But if you compare their GDP plus their uh, debt portfolio, they borrow. But they utilize their borrowing well to an extent they give other countries their money which they have borrowed. Therefore, this country can continue borrowing, but what we must do is we must utilize the money we borrow to trigger development in the economy. That time, that, that, that borrowing will help the economy. Mr. Speaker, on this particular bill, I want to say this. On Article 28, Clause 28 of the bill, concerning fuel, Mr. Speaker, fuel is a, a factor of production. If you increase the prices of fuel, all other things will increase. It means those who are doing production will increase the prices of items. This bill, I agree also with my chairman of budget. That budget must be financed. But the timing is bad, Mr. Speaker. As we speak today, Kenyans cannot afford three meals per day. They are taking two meal breakfast and supper, and some are only taking one meal. Therefore, if you increase any tax, actually the government is not going to realize the objective because the purchasing power has gone down. So even if you say you are paying 16%, people will no longer use their vehicles. Some will, people will use matatu. It means the vehicles will be parked at home. Therefore, you'll be correct, collecting less revenue. Mr. Speaker, if you read today's nation, it is talking about the number of billionaires who have left the country because of high tax. If we, we, we pass this bill in entirety the way it is, so many investors and manufacturers and people can contribute to the development of this country are going to leave this country and produce elsewhere. Therefore, what I'm suggesting is that the budget must be financed. But why must we employ a governor who has served two terms, who has pension, to be a CAS? That's a question I'm asking myself. Why should we employ an MP of South three terms who is earning a pension to be a CS? Do we really need them? My proposal for this country is that let us put our priorities right and caution the current population for the time being until the economy stabilizes. I believe, and I'm a strong believer, that we must pay tax. But people who pay tax and they We have attacked our people in a time when they really need us. I want to be in the right side of history that the timing is bad. Let us look for ways of financing the budget by reducing expenditure, sealing loopholes of corruption, and then putting our priorities right, and we are going to finance the budget. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Dr. Chikati. Oh, boy. I, 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 I